Hello and welcome. Last time we created a health system and in this lecture I thought we should start by doing some combat. So we still don't have any enemies to hit. We're gonna get to that soon. Right now in this lecture we're going to create a sword and a attacking animation. Like Link when you attack he thrusts his sword in a direction. So let's go ahead and do that. In my sprites folder I will import a new asset. I will import, oh I'm in a wrong folder, let's see desktop, RPG course, sword, I will import the sword sprite. Now if I drag it up into the scene, we, we don't see we don't see it, but that's because it's under the player. Let's bump up the order, order in layer to be 5, there you can see it faintly, it's too small, so let's increase the size, that should be a decent size for a sword. Now we will create a prefabs folder. This is where, where we will keep our prefabs like the player, enemies and the sword. Now I can delete the sword from the hierarchy and I can create it in the game whenever I want. We 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 still don't want don't want to create a player prefab because we're not done with our player character yet. Hopefully soon the player will be completed fully. So now that we have our sword, we should add a few components to it. So for the start off, we will add a box collider 2D, and this will be a trigger, because you want to hit things with our sword. And we will add a rigid body 2D, and be sure to disable gravity scale, because we don't want any gravity in our 2D game. Now that that is done, let's head up to our player script and we need a reference to the sword so let's say public game object sword okay so now we want to create a sword whenever we press a button so let's go ahead and we could create a method for I want to show you something this code is getting the script is getting big and we can just drop the click this plus icon here and drop this method so we have movement this kind of like takes a lot of space but if we just drop it down it says movement and we know what's what it does and we can also do that for get health and let's create a new method call it maybe attack so when we attack we want to create a new game object so let's say game object, call it new sword, and then we're going to instantiate. We spoke about this in a previous course. If you didn't enroll on that, instantiate basically creates a game object. So first we create the game object, which is sword, this one. Then we say where we want to create it, which is transform dot position, and then we define the rotation of this game object. And I want it to be its origin rot rotation, so sort of transform dot rotation. Now we can save that. Zoom out. Now we have the sword created. The next step is to kind of have a thrusting attack in a kind of like in Zelda, if you're facing right and you attack, you kind of thrust your sword sword to the right. So we're going to say new sword and we that is done by uh, let me show you how this works so if I save now and if I go into unity click on my player you can see that I'm going to have a new new parameter here which is sword and I will plug in my game object sword here and this game object has a few components it has a transform and it has a rigid body a box slider and a sprite renderer and when I create this sword I'm I can I'm going to need to talk to these these components here like the rigid body and transform so we can actually do things with it right now if I just start the game well nothing will happen because I have to call this attack method so let's say in our update if we if we type in if input dot get key down and let's say key code space so whenever I hit space I want to attack now if I play and if I hit space, it's just going, going to spawn a sword in our position. 
we don't want that let's continue back in our attack method we will do the following first thing we need, we want to rotate the sword how are we going to do that well we want to see to check the player's rotation that can be done if you remember back from our animator when, when we set integers we have this direction parameter and each of these numbers is a kind of represents one direction so we can actually use this to rotate our sword so let's do just that we can say anim dot get int get integer which is direction um, actually we will create a new variable a new integer sword direction and it, this is going to be equal to anim get direction so basically this integer sword di direction is a temporary variable only available in this method and it's going to be whatever direction this is so it's, it can be 0 1 2 or 3 and then we're going to say if sword direction is equal is equal to 0 we will say new sword dot transform rotate and so 0 is up so we want to keep the rotation as it is I'm going to say else if sword direction is equal to 1 so 1 is down it's going to be new sword dot transform dot rotate so down is 0 and we want to rotate on the y-axis by 180 degrees we can say minus or 100 doesn't really matter and then 0 and else if sword direction is equal to and 2 is left and we say new sword dot transform dot rotate so left is I believe minus 90 then just else if sword direction is equal to 3 new sword dot transform dot rotate say 0 90, 0. I think this should work just fine if we didn't mess something up. So basically, we will create a new sword and then we will play around with its transform values. So let's save the script and go back into Unity. And let's check it out if it works. So I'm going right and if I press space, okay, this one works. Hmm. Oh, uh, I apologize, we made a mistake. We don't rotate on the y-axis, we rotate on the z-axis. I'm sorry. No problem, you can fix that easily. Sometimes it's really good to make mistakes because you learn more from mistakes than from successes. And now if we save this and go back into Unity, if I go left, well, as you can see, we just messed up the values for left and right. No problem, just set 90 here and minus 90 here. Save this, go back into Unity. Now if I go right and attack, here's my sword. If I go left, attack, there's my sword. If I go up, attack, there's my sword, facing up, and it's facing down. So far, this is looking really good. But this lecture is taking up a lot of time, so we will continue this in a later lecture. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next le lecture. Hello and welcome back. So let's continue with creating our combat. Last time we just made a script that when we attack and depending on the direction we face it, it just creates one of these swords. So let's move on. So now we want to create kind of a sword thrusting animation we could create an animation but we I think it's easier to do it through a script so let's just go to create a new variable I'll call it maybe public float thrust power 
and now uh, in our attack method after we've done another way we can organize code is I can say hashtag region and then I can say um, sword rotation and then I can say hashtag end region and if I comment this I can minimize this region here and I know that in this method this here is sword rotation and I know it works already so no need to take up lines in my code and distract me like this it just much much more it's easier to read like this so let's continue now when we rotate our sword we're going to say new sword and we in order to trust it in a direction we need to get a component and what we want to get is this component rigid body a rigid body allows us to use all kinds of physics so we're going to say rigid body 2d and then we go we want to add a force and now depending on the rotation of our sword we want to add a force in a set direction so now it would actually be a lot a lot more readable if we did this adding force in when we change direction so let's do that I'm just going to add these brackets because if you don't have brackets it just means so let me show you if I say if something and then say X this just means that only this will be executed if this statement is true but if we have curly brackets everything that is contained in these curly brackets will, will be executed if that condition is met if somebody forgot about that just to remind you so we'll add these curly brackets and then get this cut this from here a new sword get a component ridge to the add force okay now we're adding force and since this this direction represents up we're going to say vector 2 dot up times trust power Okay, let's go back into Unity, and on our player, let's set the thrust power to maybe 200. Let's check if this works. Okay, but the sword flies off to the distance. We do want that, but we also don't want that, because in Legend of Zelda, when your health is full, you usually have a ranged attack with your sword. In the first game, the sword just flies off into the distance until it hits something we will do the exact same thing but first we'll do kind of like a short range attack let's continue with our first let's finish up these for all, all the directions add curly brackets and say new sword get component you get one to get the rigid body 2d don't forget to add these brackets add a force so this is down and this that's also a vector to that up this time we just multiply by minus trust power this is I believe left let's see direction 2 is direction 2 it's right yeah it's left so let's say new sword dot get component which is body 2D. Add force. Vector 2 dot right times minus trust power. And finally, we can say new sword component, which is body 2D. Brackets. Add force. Vector 2 dot right and times trust power save that now if I go back into unity I should be able to attack in all directions so let's see if I go left attack left up right and down this kind of I think this is kind of slow so let's increase the thrust power to 250 let's see how that feels I think that's nice but also thing to note is I can spam these swords now 
and I can also walk and attack in Legend of Zelda you could when you attack you stop so that's exactly what I'm going to do to do that we're going to create a public boolean called can move this is going to be public well you, you will see shortly so in the game start we say can move is true and in our movement method let's find the movement method I'm going to say if can move is false then I'm going to return oops return return just means if this statement is true it's just going to stop executing all code so let's drop this down now I can save this but now we have a problem because if I attack well we don't have a problem yet we want to when we attack we want to set can move to false but we never set it back to true again so we want to create a script for the sword which yeah let's just do it let's just open up our scripts folder and create a sword controller script um, create C sharp script call it sword open it up open it up please in the script I want to have a timer for the sword and I also want this script to communicate with our player so we can know when he can attack and when he can't attack I reload all okay here's our sword so to start off let's create a float kind of like timer and set it to maybe 0.5 then in our, in our update we're going to say timer minus equal time dot delta time let's go back to our player and now we have a since we set this public bool this is a public boolean that means that we can access this this variable in other scripts other objects can access that variable so if timer is less than or equal to zero we want to do a few things here the easiest way to access a variables in different scripts is especially in the player script is to say game object find game game object with tag and we're looking for the player tag and then we want to get component so in that game object we want to get the player component the player script and we want to say can move is true so now if we save this and if we go back into unity click on our player make sure to set the tag to be player okay also in our script I want to destroy game object this refers to this game object so this sword and now if we save this go back into the game if I play I can walk around if I attack I stop wa walking around but uh, I, I noticed that you see um, I shoot the sword too long to, to a long range I want that so I'm going to set the timer to maybe one let's see how that looks okay that's almost good so let's say 15 okay that's that, that's great that feels kind of like in a Zelda game there's still a few issues we have that we're going to fix in a few episodes in the next episodes for example I can just keep mashing space and keep attacking with my sword keep walking don't worry we'll fix all of that so thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture Welcome back everyone. In the last lecture we created this sword thrusting attack. 
but we have a few problems now if I spam space I keep creating the sword and I can continue walking so we're going to fix that and also what I want to do is if I if my current health is equal to my maximum health I want to shoot out my sword just like in Legend of Zelda and also we're going to create our player animation as you can see now if I press space it just stands there but we actually have sprites for him attacking like as you can see here so let's continue open up our player script and the first thing I'm going to do is create another public boolean called can attack this will basically make sure that we can't have more than one sword active at the same time when the game starts I'm going to set can attack to be true and in the attack method I will check if can attack is false I'm going to return and as soon as we attack we set can move to be false we're going to set can attack to be also false now if we go back to our, to our sword script and when we when the sword is destroyed after 0.15 seconds we set can move of the player to be true and let's do the exact same thing for can attack So we find the game object attack player, we get the component player script, and we set can attack to be true. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between can move and can attack? Well, if our current health is equal to our maximum health and we want to shoot out our sword, it would be st stupid to wait for it to be destroyed, like if it's flying to the end of the map and the player still can't move, so we're going to shoot it out and we'll, we will be able to move. So save this and go back into Unity. Now we shouldn't be able to spam sword. You can see I'm hitting space, but I'm o I only have one sword, which is what I wanted, which is great. Let's go back to our script. And now if we attack, we want to check if our health is, if our current health is equal to our maximum health. If it is, we want to send the sword flying. In that case, we want we want to create a public boolean in our sword called called maybe special. We'll set special to be fa false. Actually, let's set it to be true. Nah, just leave it like this. And now, when we attack, and then we create our sword, we want to say if current health is equal to max health you want to say new sword dot get component we want to get the sword script and from that script we, we will access the special boolean and set it to true and now that the spe special is true we can in our update method say if special is false execute this means if special is false it will execute this code so if special is true we want to do something different so down here we will have a different timer for special we will say float special timer let's set that to one so I want the sword to be flying for one second and then we say also we want the special timer oops special timer to be subtracted each frame from time dot delta time and now we say if a special timer is less than or equal to zero again we destroy the game object but before we do that we want to set we want to find the player so find game object with tag player get component can attack and set can attack to be true now in this case you will notice that we don't reset can move from the player well what I will do is if our current health 
is equal to max health in here where I set the special boolean of the sword to be true I'm going to say that can move from the player is also true now if we save this and go back into unity and play since my current health is equal to my max health you, you can see that I shoot out my sword and I can't spam space I can't create more swords but this sword speed is kind of slow so let's increase that you see we have a we multiply it by a thrust power here and in case current health is equal to max health I'm just going to say th uh, thrust power times equal equal times 2 this means that we will multiply thrust power by 2 so basically this should move twice as fast so let's check it out and it does I shoot out my sword this is maybe too fast yeah, it is. Let's just set it to 400. See how that looks. Okay, it's better. Still a bit slow. Maybe maybe we should set it to 500. Okay, that's about nine. That looks good. So that's going to be it for this lecture. In the next one, we will be creating our player attack states, attack animations. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Last time we created our attacks. So when we have when our current health is equal to our maximum health, we will shoot out a sword. And if it isn't, if it's less than our maximum health, we'll just do a melee attack. What I want to do today is have kind of life like attack states. So when I attack, I want to draw a attacking sprite. Since we do have our attacking sprites here on our sprite sheet, but if we just press space, our character stays like 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 nothing is happening. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on a window and get the animation window opened I will drag it down next to the console so I have a nice preview now if we click on our player we will be able to edit animation for him so if we click on this drop down here we can create a new animation clip and be sure to put this where your other animations are mine is in the animation folder I will call this animation attacking up and then I will just find the attacking up sprite and drop it into this timeline this animation will just consist of one sprite just like that and now I'll create a new animation clip I'll call this one attacking down there's the attacking down sprite drop it into the timeline create a new clip call this one attacking left this is the attacking left sprite drop it in there create a new clip call this one attacking right and I think this is the final sprite yeah it is drop it in and we're done for creating the animations. We can close this tab and let's head up to our animator. If you don't have your animator here, you can go on to window and just enable animator. Here we have our previous animation, animation setup for walking. Right now, if you hold down alt and left click, you can move around in the animator window. And here are our newly created attacking animations. I will take the attacking up animation and put it next to walking up because you can only attack up if you were walking up so let's create a transition from walking up to attacking up by right clicking and dragging a node connecting them this game is set up so that you can never walk right and attack up you will always have to be walking in a direction in which you want to attack so we don't have to have any complicated transitions like we had for walking I'm just going to connect these so put them next to the representative walking counterpart so walking right and attacking right will be next to each other walking down and attacking down and walking left and attacking left make transitions so this looks really nice 
but we still haven't defined any way for our transitions of these animations. I'm going to create a new parameter. So for walking, we had an integer which was called dir as in direction, and each of these numbers was mapped to a different animation. So if it was zero, we would play walking up. If it was one, we would play walking left. So let's do the same thing for attacking. I'm going to add a new integer and I will call it attack dir. And I will have the same mappings. So if walking up was zero, attacking up will also be zero. So let's click on this node here that connects them. And be sure to disable exit time. And then we can set our condition to be attacking direction equals zero. Let's set this up for all the other attacking animations. So walking left is two. So the transition from walking left to attacking life, left, disable exit times, and set the condition to be attacking direction equals to two. Walking down is three, I believe, is one. Okay, let's set the condition, dis disable the exit times first, don't forget that, and set the condition to be attacking direction equals to one. And walking right is three. Disable the exit times. And set the condition to attacking direction is equal to three. Unity gave us a few warnings here, that's because it's not yet sure what we, what we want. So now that we have these set up, if I I would I was to run the game, if Unity would let me, for some reason, okay. You would see my character is only in the walking up animation. That's because by default attacking direction is always zero. And this animator was disabled for some reason. Let's re-enable it. So if I walk right, I'm walking right. But as soon as I start walking up, I'm Kind of like, it's deciding which animation to play, it's kind of like attacking as it walks. That's because by default attacking direction is zero, and it will always start playing this animation. So let's set that to be like five by default. So now if I run the game, we walk normally. And now what we want to do is when we attack, we want to play the correct animation. So let's open up our script. And down when we, in our attack method, we have this sword direction variable. So basically what this does is it gets the integer from direction. So basically if we're walking up, this is going to be zero, and this is going to be equal to zero, which is exactly what we want because now we're going to say anim.setInteger, and the integer that, we're, that we are setting is attack there, and the value is sword direction. So now as soon as we attack, it will take the direction. It's, it can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And then just write that direction to our to our direction integer. And then we will play the corresponding an attacking animation. But we also have to stop this animation. So how we're going to do that is we can we will open our source script. And since we know that our player is going to is if he does if his current health is less than or equal to his max health, he's going to do a melee attack. And if he does that, we have 0.15 seconds of him not moving, and that's a that's enough time to show this animation. So we can say if timer is less than or equal to zero, we will say the following um, we want to get the reference to the player find game object with tag make sure that you wrote this correctly because there's also a method called find game objects with tag we want game object singular player and we want to get component the component that, that we want to get is the animator and we want to say a set integer we're setting the attack direction and we're setting it to let's say five. Okay, let's save this. And now if I go back into Unity and if I click play, 
I can run around perfectly, but if I attack, my guy plays the attacking animation, and if I walk up, attack, he plays the attacking animation, walk down, attack, and walk left, and we have this nice little attacking animation. You might have noticed there, if you were keen eyed, that when we transition from our attacking to walking, that we have exit times. We can disable those. It just makes things look better. So I'm just disabling these animations now, these exit times. Okay. And finally this one. Now we can just clear these warnings. And if we play our game, everything, whoa. Oh yeah, now, since we disabled the exit times, it doesn't have any condition to transition back to. So we, we can re-enable the exit times, but just decrease them. Put a small value like 0 0.15 to all of those. Let's do that. Sorry about that. I like to say that sometimes it's good to make mistakes because you learn more from mistakes than from successes. And we're making this game together, so... And now if we play the game, I attack, there's the, there, there's the strike, choose the sword, and it's great. So thank you for watching, and in, in the next lecture, I believe we should start by creating some enemies. So thank you, and see you in the next lecture. Hello and welcome. So in the last lecture we created our attacking animations, and today I thought we should do some polishing and add our first enemy. So if you if we shoot out our sword now, you can see that after a few seconds it just disappears. Which in my opinion looks really lame. And I want to create some kind of special effect that serves as an indicator that the sword was destroyed. So let's go ahead and create a particle system. We have a separate course on particle system creation if you want to check it out. So I won't go into too many details on how particle systems work. I will just click on create and create a particle system. I will name this particle system maybe sword effect. And in the inspector we have this particle system component which we can tweak to get all sorts of effect. Currently I want to go down to emission and change the emission. As you can see, currently it's set to rate over time, which means that over time it's spawning particles like this. But I don't want that. I'm going to set this to zero. Instead, I want a burst of particles. So I'm going to hit this plus here. And I, go I don't want too many particles. I'm going to say minimum 10. Maybe maximum 25. You can see our burst of particle there. But the shape is the same as previously, so particles are going up. We don't want that, so I'm going to drop this down and go to shape. The shape is cone. We, if we go to our scene view and select our particle system, we can see how, how the shape looks. We could tweak these, the cone, but a better solution is if we just choose a sphere. And there you can see how our particles emit currently. Also, the duration of these particles is 5 seconds, which I think is too long, so I'm going to set it to 2. And for now, we will leave looping to be checked, because it's easier to preview the particle. If we were to disable looping, we would need to go to scene and simulate it every time we, we wanted to look at it. So I'm just going to set looping to be checked. Moving onwards, I want to decrease the size of these particles over lifetime. So I'm going to enable the size over lifetime parameter and drop down this window. Now we can click on this size here and mo modify this curve. So if I move, move this pin down, you can see how these particles decrease slowly. Okay. Another thing, I think the size is a bit too big. So I'm going to set the star si start size of these particles to 0.8. Also, I will change the start color to something, let's see, something different. Yep, 
you can play around with these values and create a particle that suits you best. I'm just demonstrating these things. We will later polish this by adding a material, but for now this should be good enough. Start lifetime is 5 seconds. I will decrease it as well to maybe 2 seconds. Okay, that looks really nice. Simulation speed, maybe we can dec decrease that as well. Okay, now I'm pretty satisfied with, with how this particle effects looks so far. Maybe just change the color a bit. Okay, and now I want to create a prefab of this particle effect so we can instantiate it in our game whenever we want. So I'm just going to drag it down into our prefabs folder. And just like that, I have our particle prefab. I'm going to destroy this previous one. Okay, now if we open up our source script, we need to specify this game object. So let's say public game object sword particle. And when we destroy it, when we destroy the sword, we want to play this particle. But you might create this particle in this in, in this section of the code, but you should avoid that because this is if our current health is less than our maximum health, which means we're in melee combat. So since it's, since it's melee, you're not destroying the sword, you just think of it as he takes out his sword and attacks and puts it back puts it back in his cupboard. But since when we're when our current health is equal to our maximum health, when we're doing our special, when we draw our sword, we can we then can destroy the sword, which kind of makes sense. So let's say instantiate sword particle, transform that position, and transform that rotation. Save this. Go back into Unity, and one thing we forgot to change is the looping parameter. So open up the prefabs folder select sword effect and just check off looping. Now if we play the game, if I shoot my sword, we have an error saying something. Oh yeah, we forgot to assign our particle effect to the sword. So click on our sword here, and if we scroll down, we will see our sword script and the sword particle parameter is empty. Just drop in our sword effect here. And now if we play, if I shoot my sword, we get a particle effect when it's destroyed, which looks really good, I believe. We will polish it a bit later down the line more. Also, thing, another thing you can notice is these sword effects, they stay in the game even though they they start playing. We can fix that easily. Let's create a new script called particle timer. Is going to be a simple script that will just destroy the particle, remove the particle from the game as soon as it's done playing. So we're going to say public load timer and an update we will say timer minus equal time dot delta time and if timer is less than or equal to zero we will destroy game object. Game object refers to the game object the script is attached to. So now if I go back into unit, if I save this and go back into unity, clo close this warning, clear it, open up my prefab and get my sword effect. Now if I add components, I can call the particle timer. And you can see we have this, since we said public float, we can we can add this script to all of our particles and each particle can have a different timer. For example, I can set this one to be two seconds and another one I can say maybe five or six seconds. So now that that is done, I can play the game and when I shoot out my sword, the particle is created and after a few seconds it is destroyed. We can also click on stats to check our frame rates and how our game runs. You can see we're not losing any frames, which is great. 
and this this lecture is getting a bit long so in the next one we'll be creating our first enemy and killing it so thank you for watching and see you in that lecture hello and welcome i want to show you something really cool you might have noticed that my editor looks different from yours mainly the my asset for asset browser you can see these folders have kind of this blue icon on top and some of these scripts as well and these prefabs and these animations well that's because i'm using a service that unity provides you can also see that this button here says collab and there's an up arrow pointing the service that i'm using is unity collaborate if i go to the service tab if you don't have this window you can just click window and services and it will open and after it loads in a few seconds you need to be logged in into your unity account i will now refresh my access and you can see the services that unity provides for us we have ads analytics cloud build collaborate performance reporting in-app purchasing and multiplayer you can see that all of these are off but collaborate i turned this on because this is a really awesome service i mean all of these are awesome but for me currently which is really useful is collaborate this game is going to be a pc game and in pc games you can't have ads and then have purchases but and, but collaborate you can use with any other game so let's say any type of game so let's say that you're working in a team of five people and you don't know how to have the same project all the t at, at all times you might be sending each other through emails and things like that but the easiest way to be up to date is using collaborate so what these blue icons mean is basically that i i made changes to these files and that i haven't uploaded them to my collaborators so i can create this project and invite people to collaborate with me so i can invite my team members for example you if you and i are making a game together and whenever i make changes to the game maybe you're making a level maybe i'm creating some scripts and when i finish my work i can click on collab i can describe my changes here i can say i made the sword particle and other things and then i can cl click publish now of course we have to save our game our scene and now you can see this is uploading and we're up to date and you can see that my name is here and it says w what i have done if we had more crew members we y you could see other people what they've done and things like that you might be thinking well i'm making this game alone i don't have i don't have any team members why would i use this well this is also really useful for backing up for example I'm going to delete this whole animations folder. Press delete. A is deleted. Now we don't have this folder. And if I run the game, the game is broken. We have all kinds of errors, warnings. And now you you might be thinking, well, we gotta create all of this again. Well, we don't. I can just simply click on collaborate and get this asset animations folder, which I previously published, and just download it back. Now it's downloading. And here we have it's back all of my animations are back i can run the game and everything works smoothly it's a really awesome service you should definitely give it a shot and thank you for watching this video if you have any more questions be sure to ask and see you in the next lecture